मात्राए बन जाए वाद्य छंदो की हो नृत्य श्रृंखला और परिपूर्ण प्रेम से हो जाए पंक्तियां सुमध्यान स्पिकमे के द्वारा आयोजित उत्तराखंड राज्य सम्मेलन के द्वितीय दिवस पर आप सभी माननीय अतिथियों का स्वागत है गुड आफ्टरनून एंड वॉर्म वेलकम टू आर एस्टीम्ड गेस्ट एंड डियर स्टूडेंट वी नाउ बिगिन डे टू ऑफ द स्पिकमे के उत्तराखंड स्टेट कन्वेंशन 2019. May I request the audience to keep their mobile phones on silent mode or preferably switched off. Movement during performances is strictly prohibited. There will be a short interval between two performances which can be used for unavoidable movement. Clicking photos and recording videos is not permitted. Cooperation is sought from each one. Thank you. लम्हों को कठपुतली बना लिया उंगलियों पर अपने उन्हें नचा लिया धागों में बांध ली जिंदगी कि तुम अपने कलाकार बन गए यह मंच भी तुम्हारा और कहानी भी लिखी तुमने किरदार भी तुमने चुने कि तुम अपने कथाकार बन गए आज के कार्यक्रम का शुभारंभ करते हुए मैं वेदांशी डोरा और मैं श्री प्रिया मंच पर विश्व विख्यात पद्मश्री श्री दादा पदम जी का हार्दिक अभिनंदन करती हूँ जो कठपुतली के से संबंधित रंगमंच के कलाकार हैं। पद्मश्री श्री दादा पदम जी पद्मश्री श्री दादी पदम जी भारत के एक प्रमुख कठपुतली कलाकार हैं और द ईश्वर पपेट थिएटर ट्रस्ट के संस्थापक हैं। उनके विश्वविद्यालय शिक्षा पूना में और बाद में एन नेशनल इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ डिजाइन और दर्पण एकेडमी ऑफ परफॉर्मिंग आर्ट्स अहमदाबाद में हुई इसके बाद वे स्वीडन के स्टॉकहोम में मैरियानेट थिएटर इंस्टीट्यूट गए और कठपुतली का अध्ययन किया जिसके बाद जनवरी उन्नीस में वे पुपेन थिएटर बर्लिन जी में एक अतिथि निर्देशक थे उन्होंने विजय दिन देता की एक लोक कथा पर एक छोटा नाटक का निर्देशन और डिजाइन किया उन्नीस में उन्होंने नई दिल्ली में श्री राम सेंटर फॉर परफॉर्मिंग आर्ट्स में कठपुतली प्रभाग में सूत्रधार कठपुतली थिएटर की स्थापना की और उन्नीस तक इसके कलात्मक निर्देशक थे जिसके बाद उन्होंने अपनी खुद की कठपुतली कंपनी द इशारा कठपुतली थिएटर ट्रस्ट की संस्थापना की पद्म जी की स्ट्रिंग और हाथ कठपुतलियों के सामान्य संस्करणों से कई अधिक बढ़कर है उन्होंने अर्ध मूर्ति कला कठपुतलियों का भी उपयोग किया है जो अभिनेताओं के शरीर से जुड़े होते हैं और पूरे मंच पर ले जाते हैं उन्हें उन्नीस में संगीत नाटक अकादमी का पुरस्कार और 2011 में पद्मश्री से सम्मानित किया गया था माफी चाहते हैं अब हम दादी पदम जी का मंच पर स्वागत करते हैं thank you uh thank you uh, it's been for me a little intimidating because it's a huge auditorium for a like them and uh, very very formal i can't see you because of these lights in my eyes but uh thank you for inviting us here my colleagues i will introduce vivek vivek kumari ganesh they're on stage with me they've already started uh Vivek is down there. Uh, they've already started the workshop yesterday, and you will be seeing a simple presentation tomorrow, which the uh, a group of I think about 30 kids are doing. Vivek, and this is the Ishara team who's been here often to Dehradun. Uh, principal, with due respects, you know you've said to the press that we are going to perform, and I'm getting phone calls from all over the countryside. And what are we performing? What are we performing? and i want to say that we are not performing we are doing a like them so, sorry about that but it's been for the last 3 days quite you know from from there are do from daily from everywhere saying that which show are you performing i said not show it's a like them oh then we are not coming <laughs> anyway so uh, the 
this is always a bit of a mix-up which happens between performances and leg dims. And as a leg dim, I've asked the kids to come in front because we do an, more an interactive thing. It's, some of you are very far back. Uh, most of you have seen some sort of puppetry. Yes, no. How many have seen puppet theater before? A lot of you have seen. Okay, I'm not going to ask which type, what type puppets. Uh, have you seen traditional puppet theaters or something more modern? Traditional puppeteers, puppet theater. How many of you have seen? Okay. Uh, traditional puppet theaters. Have you seen on strings or have you seen shadow puppets? What have you seen? Now I need those mics here. I've asked for them, but I don't know what's happening. Sorry? At least the front group. Yeah. You've seen both. How many of you have seen some contemporary work, modern work with puppetry? How many have seen? Very few, only three people, okay? Uh, may I ask you, how do you define tradition and modern? How would you define that? Somebody in front, can you tell me what is tradition or what is modern? In your minds, how do you define this? It's not going to be a one-way talk, please. You'll have to interact. Okay, let me ask you a question. What is tradition? Nobody? Nobody from the schools in Dehradun can tell me what tradition is. Come on, anybody? Here, at least in the front row, it's easier for you to speak. The mic will come to you. Put your hand up and the mic will come to you. Quickly, run. Something which was established long back and has been continued Sorry, by you generations. Have to, I'm, I'm almost deaf at 67, yeah. Something which was established a long time ago and has been continuing since then. It has As been? a part of our culture. As a part of your culture. Okay. How do you define culture? It's very interesting. Um, Anybody? Some, some, you said something that is in the past. What did you say? Which was established a long time ago and has been continuing since then with minor changes. Okay. Fine. Nothing right and wrong here. We just need to get you to speak. What is the opposite? Uh, okay. What is modern then? Which is coming out in new times. Sorry? Something which is uh, being created or... Which is? Which is uh, you know, I, because I don't have the monitor clearly on me, so I can't hear you. Yeah. Something which is coming out more prominently in the modern times or has been recently created. You said modern times. So is there a traditional time? Uh, Why do we distinguish between these two? That's my question. Okay, anybody else? Nobody. Anybody else from here? Guys, always the girls have been answering questions in all my leg dims. The boys are always quiet. Why is that so? Are you shy? Okay. Uh, for me, tradition is ongoing. Okay. And it's a, it's, it's a sort of a linear thing that comes into because you will have traditional performing arts or you will have something maybe as you said we no longer in at least in our puppetry work we say generational puppeteers because when we say tradition there are modern traditions as well today the families were performing and they've created a tradition as well say in the last 15 20 years so they started sort of defining these little things of generational or a family tradition or a school of performing arts which you see in fact in all your workshops what one question again, a simple before I start, what is puppet theater? What is puppetry? Or what is a puppet? In English, we use the word puppet, okay? Uh, we have many languages in India, and in each of the languages in the seven or eight states where puppetry exists traditionally, they have a term for puppets. What has happened is that we become uh, in Hindi, we just said Katputli, but Kaat Ki Putli or Katputli is just from Rajasthan. So I cannot call an Andhra string puppet or a, a Andhra shadow puppet a Katputli. Okay? You have to go back and do a little research here. The generic term is puppets or Putli or Putul or whatever you want to call it, in which there are different styles. Glove puppets, string puppets, shadow puppets, I'll show you, some rod puppets. But what is a puppet? What is a puppet? Come on, hurry up. Otherwise, Malika will be on my head because she's waiting to come on stage. What is a puppet? 
Nobody knows what a puppet is. How will you define what a puppet is? Again, the same lady, come on. Mike, Mike. Let everybody hear. Can you hear what we are saying? Yes? A medium for the artist to express himself Sorry. or herself. A medium in theatre to for the artist to express himself or herself through okay. um, yes, through right. an instrument maybe, right. and that instrument is excellent. called a puppet. Excellent, which means puppets or any other medium uh, to express. It can be dance, it can be poetry, it can be writing, it can be a song expression. Puppet is just a medium. Puppet, a puppet is no, nothing without the puppeteer and the audience. Okay, otherwise it's just a figure. What is the difference between this table and you? What is the difference between this table and you? Yeah? Non-living. And? And you are? But I don't see you are living, you are all zip tight. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that's the definition, maybe a slightly boxed into de definition of inanimate and animate. So an inanimate object that is given life becomes a puppet. So if I start moving this table or the chair in a certain way, it might become a puppet, okay? And I'll give you a slight demo before we go on to something else. Some of you have seen this many times, but I'll do it again and again. Here is a bag, okay? The bag does not have any embellishments as in eyes, say, if I have to give character to this bag, who or what could it be? Quickly. That's why I've called you in front. Come on. If I have to give this bag character, who could it be? Or what could it be? Okay. Making it simpler, male or female? How many say male? Lights. Yeah. How many say female? Okay, now there were some, the, as an average, there were more males hands up for this bag. Why? Why? Why did you think more male? Come on, the one, someone who put up their hand for male, tell me. Why did you think, why did you put gender as in male here? What made you think that? Derudun, what have you done to the school? They're so proper. <laughs> they are so proper, your kids. <laughs> oh, I was just told that there's a problem with language. Is that right, Hindi? Please tell me. I, 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 I speak in Hindi. Huh? Yeah. Because it has got a manly figure. Sorry? Because it has got a manly figure. But if you monitor me here, because you're saying what you're saying, I don't want to hear it. Here's something. Is there a monitor? Oh, it's not working. Yeah. Tell me. Uh, it is basically uh, used by males more than females. I mean, this bag. So. Okay. Big. And it's black in color. It's <laughs> Okay. I was waiting for this. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, okay, yes. Come on, guys, you have to run with the your bag. The bag is also not very decorative, it's unlike the females who. Okay, who now I'm coming back to all these things. Okay. Yeah. Sir, I think it can be both. You can, it can be both. Okay, great. Now, yeah? Female. The metallic, ha uh, the metallic handle of the bag gives. Um, a visual of a broad sort of thing or uh, some decorative some item on the so that's hair why used for tying that, their hair. That's why so female, yeah. right? Okay, so now you see what, what is happening to us today is that we're growing up or we call this baggage in theatre. We grow up and go right up to the end saying this is colour is this, this is female, this pink is pink is female, blue is boy, uh, black is, uh, you know, uh, male. You know, these are sort of stereotypes and very often in, I cannot say that, but in many schools we are taught this from childhood that this is, this is. Some of the new schools I'm sure are breaking these gender stereotypes. But what I'm explaining to you is that when you see an object, okay, when I asked you, your mind started working, but when the object is seen directly, the object speaks to you. The object 
speaks to you through color, through shape, through form, through whatever, which goes into design eventually. So whatever you make or whatever you design eventually has a reason. Black, it has a certain solid form. There were more males, okay? If I had a bag like this, now tell me, what? What? Why? Because of the color and because of the shape? Does it mean that a boy or a man cannot use this bag? Di diverse the person using the bag, but does that say that to you? Okay, we have to think a little bit differently at times. If this, if this was male, if young, old, I'm not sure, but it's quite strong, and if I have to move it or if I have to animate it, I would make him walk like this. I can even make him walk like this, but maybe this is better. Okay, if as you say she, maybe, okay, and now what else, and there's another bag, now see all three bags put together, the word juxtaposed, you have heard this word juxtaposed, have you heard the word juxtaposed before, no, yes, no, juxtaposition, these three bags are together and a story forms, okay, I can make a story without using things or embellishments, okay? So this is the essence of puppetry, animate, inanimate, and object animation, and I can do a 15 minute or a five minute story with just objects. This is the essence of puppetry, the, the rest you will see, that is, uh, this is the A, B, C, D, that's the Z coming up, okay? Now I'll do a small improvisation again. Same question, shoe. Male, female. Why? Don't think about who wears the shoe. Male. Male? How many say male? Okay, how many say female? Very few. And the ones who didn't say anything, no grey matter? You didn't think of anything? Okay. Male, if the shoe was a different colour, I am sure you would say female. I don't know if you've got a coloured shoe like this. Is there a color shoe? No, we haven't got. Anyway, you're so far away that I can't even find things. But if this was a pink or a lighter shoe, I'm sure you would have said female. And this is the thing that we have to find out or question ourselves. I'm not saying it's right or wrong. But as you go along, you have to think about this. Because when I do puppet theater or elect them, and in school especially, this has always been a discussion on this that why do we think this way, or what is the reason, or, or why is red tell you this, and why does something else say, or blue, or these, these, are, these are sort of boxed in things, and you have to sometimes think differently. Now if there's another shoe, this obviously, yeah, maybe it is, because it is, it is a female shoe. This could be male or female, actually. And I'll do this little, and. This, this, a, a small bit of animation, and you can tell me what happens afterwards. Okay, what happened here? I'm sorry, did it hit you? Sir Is it is language a problem? Because one of my puppeteers said there are many people who do not speak English in some schools here. I'm not sure. Yes? Yes? Okay, ab bata dije. Kya hua isme? What happened? Quickly, now my ladies, what happened? There was no, there was no there were no eyes, there was no mouth, 
Yet there was a focus, okay? There were eyes with the way the shoes were being animated. Tell me what happened. Kya hua? Bataya. Mike. The girl was upset with the boy. The girl was? Upset with the boy. Why was she upset? Because the, the boy was, was not at time. Uh -huh. The boy was not at time. The boy was not in time. Okay. <laughs> okay. What else? <laughs> Anything else? Any other words? And then there? later, the boy tried convincing the girl, and uh, she really got angry at him, and she just beat him, yeah, kicked him. Yeah, but what was the reason? Why? Because she kept waiting for him. He didn't come, show Same up on time. Time. Okay. Is there any other version to the story? Adults, any other version? Huh? He was trying to get fresh with the young lady. Okay. I think, and I think he was doing it. Okay. And I think he was doing it too early in their meeting. Okay. And therefore she threw him out. Now, what is happening here is, again, essence of puppetry, object, animation, inanimate object given life, and it started telling you a story. So, puppets need not be this whole thing that we dress up and, you know, decorate and things. You can make puppets or things from very simple things. A whole story can be formed. What also is being demonstrated here is that what I have in my mind is not necessarily always what the audience has. Though this is, this is the same thing. But remember that when you're doing something, the audience or the people you're doing it for also are part of what you're going to say. So it's not a one-way thing. I am taking two steps to you by performing this little piece, and you are taking two steps to me, and that is how the performance gets created. That is how this thing comes alive, because from your experience, you put in your experience, I put in whatever, and then it happens. So, so this is very important for me, at least when we are doing performing with puppets or any other art form. The uh, a German puppeteer, Albrecht Rosa, very clearly said the puppet is like a vessel, a katora hai, jisme aap puppeteer or audience, pandra minute ke liye usme aap ki matlab uh, kalpana dalte hai. They give, they put their emotion into this vessel and that's how it comes alive. Not otherwise. Not if I just shake the object by anything and that's how it is. So let's go to something else now. We can go to what we all know as glove puppets, very simple glove puppets, but the most simple glove puppet from where it starts, because it's on a hand, Dastanya Putur, but something which is very in interesting, just a piece of cloth and three rubber bands. Okay. Without need of any stitching. Okay, so I've got, I've got three the, uh, rubber bands and single. 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 Yeah. Okay, so now watch, just cloth and three rubber bands. And if I animate it, or if I move it in a certain way, you will feel that it's maybe alive. Okay, if I do that, it's walking. If I do this, if I do this, if I do this. If I do this, it'll be something else. Okay? So, it's your experience that is making this come alive, not just this. So, this. Then, once you put something more on it, it starts becoming more and more alive as what you might want it to be. Okay? Okay, and then next is a formal puppet. These are exercise puppets without anything, so we work them for movement. So then this is a formal glove puppet, the, the mat as we call it. And it starts from here, maybe there. Then it goes to this. Okay, so slowly, slowly this is developing from something very simple. Okay, you need cloth, you need maybe stitched, maybe not, you need something solid for a head, and it starts coming alive. And then you have 
something which is a total sort of a glove puppet. Now, no, you don't have to say because the character is already there, color, whatever is saying something to you. Okay? The, now, yeah. This has been made by, a, in a workshop, by, I think, a seven, eight-year-old young student. It's a rod puppet, okay? And it's the most simple sort of rod puppet. It's got a head, it's got a shoulder, it's got a slightly oversized arm, and now it starts getting alive. Okay, there is focus. I can't do this. I can't just do this. It has to be less is more. Where are you sitting? Where are you looking? Where? They're sitting right there at the back. Okay. Okay. I can use my own arm with it, my own hand. Just a piece of cloth, and it becomes even more alive, maybe. Fantasy and real. And this can be to pick up things to work with, you know, walking. Sitting, not sitting like this, this is the first mistake. Took, took, but to give you the illusion of life, bending forward and sitting. Why does this movement come or where does it come? It comes from observing the human movement. So, see, one, two, three, and four. One, two, three, and four. And that is then put into this one, two, three and four, bend forward, up and straight. If I just do this, the illusion is broken. There's no body here, so that, and what is it? It's just a piece of thermocol or styrofoam, a shoulder and this. What we say, willing suspension of disbelief. For these five, 10 minutes, if I work it well, the puppet comes alive, even though you know that I'm standing behind it. It, it gets something that way. It breathes. Okay. Then you have larger marots, as they are called, hand and rod puppets. And then you have the same thing here, but even simpler because I, we, when you work. Uh, with young people, it doesn't have to be, I mean, a professional puppet theater might make something that lasts for 10, 20 years or even more. Something might break in 10 minutes, but if it's speaking to you for the 15, 20 minutes, it's just as good. Here is another small figure with just, and it's made from scrap material. Can you tell me what it is? The head? It's a bottle. It's a bottle with some brown paper, papier mache down on top, and it's become a small puppet. It can have two hands if two, if two people work it. And then you have something which is working on the tabletop, which is, again, very sort of emotive. There's no body there, but it still gives you, and two people are coordinating this. Now, these are very, very simple things that you can do yourself. But as I said, it's not just shaking the figure that gives it life. It's controlled. It's the, it's the focus where the thing puppet is looking at, what it's doing. And though they have rehearsed and they work together in tandem, but it's a combination. Now, here what happens is a next, another character comes in. The puppeteer becomes a character. While it's in the beginning, the puppeteer was not a character. Yeah. In this case, it's the puppet, not them. And once there is a focus or there is a focus with him, eye contact, you have another dimension to it. Okay. Then you have something which uh, uh, most of you would have heard of Sesame Street or Amariya uh, Gali Gali Sim Sim. The Sesame Street Muppets, or Jim Henson, the late Jim Henson, the 50s, 60s in USA, with two table tennis balls on his hand, started what he called Muppets, hand and mouth puppets. It went all over the world and was used for television, especially preschool learning. And it started with a sock puppet, 
just a sock with two table tennis. In fact, our group is making some of these as well here. And this becomes then more elaborate. It becomes here. Yeah. And then you have the same thing. It's just a clapboard with different material. And you can use it with your arm or your hand. And then you have another one there which becomes more. These are mostly used on television because they wanted people like, I won't say who, but who speaks a lot on television, the news, and the mouth and hand puppets. And because of the mouth moving, it became very popular for television, for TV. And this was made from the non-reflecting surface with fleece, with other materials, so it doesn't shine on television close up. Okay. Muppets, remember, it became, an, it became a tec it, another technique of puppetry, glove, rod, shadow, string puppets, Muppets or hand puppets, but this became very famous uh, everywhere in the world today because of TV, yeah. Now I'll show you something which is this shadow figure. Uh, these are miniatures actually of traditional shadow puppets from Kerala. Tol Power Kutu. This is what I was trying to say. I cannot call this a Katputli, okay? Maybe puppet, yes. But then the technique shadow puppet, it's made from leather, it's from Kerala. And Tol Power Kutu, okay? Tol, as in leather, Tol, Power, as in the figure, and Kutu. This is how it is, Katputli, Kaat Ki Putli, wooden puppet. These are worked on rods, on a screen, they worked and these may be precursor to film or animation. So, so you see, I don't know, the light in front is very strong. So you see, you can have silhouette or you can have translucent leather or paper. What you will see tomorrow is done with paper and cellophane sheets on a similar screen and then what is interesting with shadow is you can play with it. You can make fantasy real, you know. You can enlarge the shadow. You can have human beings with the shadow, right? Right? The shadow would normally be on a stick, the shadow puppet, and the screen would be 45 degrees tilted to the audience, so it rests on them. And this is thinner, but these are actually miniature from Andhra Pradesh. Okay, Tolu Bomalatam as they're called, and they're uh, the thinner leather and translucent. In fact, India has the largest, tallest shadow puppets in the world, almost five to six feet from Andhra Pradesh. It's very interesting because from India it goes to China, Southeast Asia, Indonesia, Cambodia, Thailand, and then there's a gap in the middle, and you see them in Turkey, you see them in Egypt as well, and. Uh, it seems either it traveled with, uh, on the Silk Route, we are not very clear, because these objects are not, they ephemeral, they deteriorate. So it's only when puppets are made from maybe terracotta or things like that, that you find jointed figures, but otherwise wood, papier mache, things like that afterwards finish. But there are instances in our old texts where they mention that a human being who doesn't use his, uh, Beja, whose brain is like a puppet, is like a puppet without a puppeteer. There are things like that which have been said that means there were certain sorts of puppets centuries ago. Okay, now I'm showing you something which comes from Japan. It's an adapted technique of three people working a figure uh, in full view of the audience. Of course, this is adapted. Bunraku Puppet Theatre as it comes from Japan, but this is the technique, not the puppet. A full formed figure. Now three people will coordinate and watch what happens. These
this needs a lot of rehearsal where where it's it's really good teamwork and concentration where one figure is being moved by three persons is possible if you and this is what the puppet can do maybe what the human being cannot do sort of puppets it's normally the head that rules so the person who vivek who's moving the head is the leader in this group and he controls the puppet so when it's looking on that side the other this hand moves when it's focusing to this hand this side this hand it's basically uh, movement movement mime dance where you do this or you do this it's put into this figure and it gets more stylized uh, the puppet sometimes maybe speaks in a certain more powerful way than the human actor and i'll explain why uh anything else oh, uh, before that i want to show uncoordinated movement even that looks nice at times but something when the three don't coordinate puppet drunk here even this has some sort of character but it's different from what they were doing earlier okay he can stand on his head he can do a bit of yoga yeah, yeah. okay well <laughs> right why why did i say that the a puppet a puppet cannot is you can say things through the puppet which sometimes you cannot say through the live actor the human actor uh, certain sensitive issues when our group was working on hiv and substance abuse in school especially in delhi and around we used puppets masks objects because it was difficult in say about 10 15 years ago to speak about gender issues to speak about uh, you know hiv and uh, you know transmission and puppets worked very well and if i may say so i remember we were in nagaland in uh, dimapur and this was a workshop for the development organization nagaland is a huge catholic campus and we were working with which are with positive people with teachers with students 10 day workshop residential workshop where they wanted to create awareness programs with puppet and if i use the word a rubber or a condom it was very difficult in a catholic school especially because there was a coed school and they wanted to test the performance the first performance it was called chunauti or the battle between ignorance and awareness the battle the boss of awareness says boss of ignorance says human beings will not be able to handle hiv boss of awareness puppet says it's in their hands if they know these things now to work with uh, the work in a school and show the four other things which are mentioned transmission was difficult so the nuns came to me and said we want to see the performance first and when they saw the 6 foot big puppet condom they said no problem it's a puppet go ahead <laughs> but you would not be able to show a real one in school so puppets sometimes can get across this border why because they call it objective theater objectivity and subjectivity you are human beings and i am a human being and we are subjective we are flesh and blood while is the puppet represents that in a mirror a human being but it is still not subjective that's why there is this mirror to human and you can say things through it it can be satire political satire humor whatever or teach through puppetry sometimes a little more forceful again an example when an actor comes on stage especially if you're looking at a film actor you will see the actor first you will see a sharuk khan first and then you will see that this is the role he did and wow he did a great role in a puppet that does not happen because a puppet speaks directly it's just made for what is meant to do the other biggest thing that the puppet uh, has or is the benefit which the human being and the difference is that the human being has an ego 
the puppet doesn't have that. And that's why it's sometimes also very speak. So this is this thing between playing between subjectivity and object. Now, uh, I'll just show you two demos of some puppets with a bit of music. I'll move them to large puppets. The first one was recently done in March at the NCP in Mumbai in a performance called uh, When Land Became Water, three stories of the Great Flood. One was, of course, everybody knows Noah's story, but then there's a Gilgamesh story as well, the flood and immortality. And then there's one from India, Manu and the fish. But the fish eventually, there's a flood and the fish saves that boat. And in the Gilgamesh story, Ishtar comes down and seduces Gilgamesh. But I'll just show you the figure that was done with some music, incidental music. and just two pieces and uh, it is of course in this performance interacting with a human being an actor right? okay. uh, simple puppets this is really simple this doesn't have a full figure and then the last one which is one of these larger puppets which are again the similar thing
again, do it look a bit complicated. It's not a puppet. As I said, a puppet's made for what it's to color. It's not to do this. This puppet is more inward looking. It's more melodrama. It's bigger movements. It's very, OK? And now we'll do something where the human being and the puppet, maybe. Let's try something. Let's. Uh, OK, now watch. Let's measure. Just again a head with a shoulder and a stick and cloth and hands. It's how you animate it. As I said, the puppets can be very technically complicated, but in Asia we work with very simple figures, uh, a lot of textile, a lot of color, a lot of form, and for us the movement is what is giving it life. It's the, it's, it's the clown figure was there, but this one is very... And Though it doesn't have pupils, it has just black eyes. It says, look, it does see. It does see. So, thank you. If there are any questions, you're welcome. If there are any questions, exactly one hour. Any questions? How, how this puppets fascinated you in the first place when you started your career as a puppet? Uh, I come from sure. Pune, just came from last night from there. And I come from a, like a family with five, six year of generations in paper making. And the paper pulp is what gave me things to make, papier mache. But I think there was maybe six or seven when I got two toy string puppets. And I think parents were very happy because I would just keep quiet and work with them. And then uh, there used to be one of the most fabulous bookshops in Pune at one time called Mani's, no longer there. And they used to have a section with theatre puppets, with, and it came through self-learning, in uh, through school, college. And through 1971, I went to NID, National Institute of Design in Ahmedabad, and uh, the lady who was going to dance her mother's academy, Darpana puppet. Uh, Darpana Academy of Performing Arts Mayor Contractor. She was the puppet section head. And in the evenings, I was involved there. And that's where more of the traditional shadow puppets and other Indian traditional styles came into being. And Mayor's whole focus, there are two schools of modern puppetry in India. One comes from Kolkata, which is more t technically perfect, wrought puppets. They studied in Russia and brought it there. And it's large performances, very much like human theatre in miniature. And the other school that came from Darpana, which was more creative, and a lot of educational work, social awareness. And in 76, I got a leave of absence for a year from NID to go to ISRO, Space Application Centre in Ahmedabad, where uh, in 75, 75, 76 was the site experiment, satellite instructional TV experiment, where for the first time, television was used for about six or seven states in India uh, in the interior communal community viewing and it programs were beamed through the satellite to these the earth station was in Ahmedabad and they said they have the usual series serial actors but they, they said there are many things that we want to say or incidents which we cannot say through as I said live theater or sensitive at that time and that's where the puppet theater started coming in. So we started a studio 
and there was a series which became very, very famous, Hubei and Hawei. These are two very famous actors. One was Kailash Pandya, who was no more. He was the Mukhi actor. And behind the fence was my puppet donkey, which was the Hawei. Sorry, Hubei, and Hawei was the man. And um, Pransuk Nayak, very, very famous Hawaii actor, gave the voice for the donkey. And every week, Tuesdays, they would meet at the same spot. And we had to work every week. And there were incidents that came in from Peach, not the other area, uh, about something that had happened. And we had to find as a team a story from anywhere in the world to fit that incident, problem, whatever you call it. So the man comes, Mukhi is the head village man, and he says, this is what has happened, da, 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 da. The man is bound by all his social things in the village. He wants to change, he can't change. But the donkey, the protagonist, could say certain things. And he could say many things at that time, which I'm worried, I'm sorry to say today, they would be too sensitive to say. And the donkey, after the first two or three programs, because TV or the language of film was still not easy, I mean, black and white, face flashback, forward cuts, you had to be very, very careful about this. And uh, uh, the first two or three programs, they were for adults and children. They said, oh, Nakli, it's not a real donkey. Of course it isn't, whatever. But then the donkey was started speaking what they wanted, you know, what was the truth. And then the studio would get full every weekend with gifts for the donkey, for the puppet. You know, kids would send stamps and invitation cards. We got wedding invitations for the donkey to come to the village. All sorts of things happened, and it carried on for 31 programs. It was one of the most successful programs because the puppet could say certain things which other, it couldn't. For instance, uh, there was an incident somewhere in Baroda, today more. So. Uh, it's a true story where uh, there was a uh, Dalit Harijan who built a temple and then when the mud happened, when the invocation happened, he wasn't allowed to come into his own temple. So it went into court and there was a case and things like that. Now, these guys said that we want to talk about this, but how do we talk about it? It's too sensitive an issue with the human actors. So it came to the puppet thing. Now this man comes up from Yuki and says, you know, this has happened and Manu's laws came in and all sorts of things happened. When the donkey criticized it, because he was a puppet, because already we were in the 15th or the 20th program where the, the puppet had the power to say things. And he says, but in my kingdom or my religion, there is nothing like this. How come? Is it? And so this thing starts, and all we could do is just with glove puppets portray that whole incident, and it was left open. They always argue and went back. There was never a clear uh, finale to it. Though what the donkey said was the one that we wanted to put. And you couldn't imagine the amount of feedback that came after that. In fact, I wonder if in Isro they still have an album with all these things that are their letters and, you know, incidents, things like that. That's how my puppet thing started. And then one thing led to another, and yeah, and I'm here. Anything more? Thank you. Any other questions? So, guys, remember that what you saw just now is much sort of developed stuff. But as I started with, very simple things is what you can do yourselves. You can take wooden spoons and, they, and move them. You can use shoes. You can use bags. You can use pens. You can animate objects and say stories maybe for 15, 20 minutes. Uh, Mayor Contractor, in fact, when she was working in the school, in Shreya School in Ahmedabad, and she was the art teacher, and the teacher used to grumble that these kids always leave all the brushes and, the, you know, they get all clogged up and dry, can't use. So they made a story with actual brushes. Some of them with all their hair, this is all clogged with paint, some very clean. And these animated these brushes, and the kids themselves did the story. And so it was a sort of a, uh, I mean, a drama and reality, and then the person in front the leader, team leader, would ask questions to the puppet. The kids would be behind the screen, not like this. So they would forget themselves. They would be the puppet. And they would talk through the puppet. So the person in front would ask questions to the puppet. And it's actually the child who's speaking through, who would otherwise be quite inhibited to say certain things. And that's how the different streams of puppetry. In fact, I must say that what brings us each time to Dehradun, I mean, 
the, the, uh, some of our major work in schools has been has started here. It was ages ago in Vellum Boys. I think the principal there, he called us for a workshop. And then Mrs. Jotna Brar called us and trusted us to stay in the institute for over a month in the school, Vellum Girls, to do their 50th anniversary. And we created a whole performance with puppets, with dance, with music, a large show. Uh, it was called the, uh, yeah, the Bird Song because of their emblem, the, the bird. And then again, 55th anniversary. Then we've been twice, I think, to Summer Valley. And through Dera Doon, and through another connection, she used to teach in, uh, I think, Doon School with Nargish Kambata, and she became the principal of James Modern Academy in Dubai. And then we've been there twice to do these large performances. And what was interesting was that Nargish said that I saw on the 50th anniversary what you did with the kids. Our school is great in the sense that it's, it's, it's amazing. You give something to those kids in the school, the next day they learn and come. And we were quite surprised. I've never seen that. You know, they knew exactly. And they said, Aap didak karo. whatever you tell us, we will do. We said, that's not the idea. And uh, her idea was that what she saw was we give, an, uh, we give a, a synopsis, we have music, we have poetry, and we create a performance with the school. And so there were almost 100 kids on stage, which was, uh, but we were five of us, choreography, uh, our puppeteers, we built puppets, we things, and uh, twice, two shows have happened there. So it's interesting, it all started from Dehradun. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, sir. May I now invite Mrs. Josna Brar, ex-principal Wellen Girls School, and Ms. Divya Devedi, principal UWS, to felicitate Sri Dadi Padanji, with a token of our love and appreciation. Do come and see what we've done with our, in our intensive workshop. It's very nice, the beautifully cut out paper puppets and these soft things. It's very short with music, but it's quite interesting tomorrow. The team members, where are they? Vivek, Kumari. May I also Ganesh. invite the team members? That's Vivek Kumar. Kumari. All of them have worked at Wellens. Which year was it? I can't remember. 2007. 2007. Thank you, ma'am. Our guests of honor for today are Mrs. Jyotsna Birar, ex-principal Wellam Girls School, and Dr. Kunal Satrarthi, principal CAS, FOS, IFS. We are delighted to have you amongst us. Well, we welcome you. <laughs> 